Hey, how are y'all doing? This is Roger Wallace. Welcome to Onward Radio. Today's topic is Trump forever. Is he leaving? He's leaving, right? Right? Coming up on this broadcast of Onward Radio. Hey, how y'all doing? Thanks again for joining me for another one of these little broadcasts I'm calling Onward Radio. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about what a lot of people are talking about right now is, is Trump leaving? And uh, of course, we're going to talk about this, you know, mostly stipulating for the sake of discussion that Biden is going to win, which is not in the bag, is not assured by any means. Even without all the, the after-election shenanigans that are likely going to happen, um, it's still not in the bag that, that Biden's going to win. Like, we remember how much Hillary was up in the polls last time, uh, right before election, election time, right about this time. So we can't make the same mistake twice. Um, so asking that question, is he leaving? And when I make these things, when I when I record these podcasts, I make I have a little, you know, make a little outline of stuff I'm going to talk for. And for this one, I put number one, maybe. Number two, yes, it's up to us. Number three, no, not if he doesn't want to. So that shows you the answer is I don't know. We don't know. And that's a, a crazy thing to say in America that the president might not accept the election results and, and try to steal it um, after the fact and before the fact. So the answer is maybe. Um, the main thing is that we have to bury him in an avalanche of votes. And that's not just because it feels good, which it will. But one of the main arguments he's going to have after the fact is, you know, after... And first, and first, let's say, too, that uh, we should already plan to not have a decision on election night. Um, it's possible that, that Biden could get up to 270 in the early states, and, and it could happen. Um, for all intents and purposes, uh, he, could, he could absolutely win 270-plus votes that night and call it good. But, of course, what Trump is going to do is try and contest the votes in several states, most likely Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, um, where, anywhere else. And you know, usually you'll ask for a recount or contest the election if it's like 0.01%, um, some small, you know, some minuscule amount that the election was decided by. But I would say he'll probably contest it if it's under 10%. Certainly if it's under 5%, he'll contest it and try to take it into the courts. Recounts and all that stuff and all that, you know, the, the take as much time as he possibly can. So the reason we need to win by a lot is to take away that argument the too close to call argument. So we need to, he needs to win by thousands upon thousands upon thousands of votes. No more, no more voting third party. Trump lost Wisconsin or Trump won Wisconsin last time by fewer votes than Jill Stein got. So if it wasn't for Jill Stein, assuming that most of them would have voted for Hillary, then he would have won. Uh, we would have won Wisconsin. So no more voting third party, at least not this time. We can't afford it. We have to win by a lot to make a recount be silly. We have to win by so much that a recount even to Brett Kavanaugh is pointless and silly and a waste of time. That's how much we have to win by. We have to win by Kavanaugh amount <laughs> for, this to, for this to really take. So we have to win by a lot. And there's so many states that are tied or close to tied or within the margin of error. There's probably, well, I haven't counted exactly, but at least 10. 
And that's way more than normal. So it's up to us to not just vote, but bring five people with you. I'm going to say it over and over and over again between now and November 3rd. It's not just enough for you to vote. You have to bring five people with you, which also can mean talking to people and convincing people to vote. Convincing people to not vote third party. That's the kind of all hands on deck that we have to have right now. So to the question of is he leaving, the answer is yes, if we vote a lot, <laughs> or a lot of us, uh, more than normal. If you know anybody who's on the fence, and you know who those friends of yours are, those family members, the ones who are apathetic and they don't really care and none of it matters and you we've all got friends like that and right now is when we have to convince them to vote don't shame them or well whatever it takes to make them vote make it happen whether it's shaming them or taking them out to lunch or being nice or whatever it takes those are the people we have to talk into voting right now is the people who May or may not, they don't know. It depends on what's going on that day. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. They don't really pay attention to this stuff. It's They don't really see where they should have to. Now's the time when we have to make that effort to make that happen. So the last answer that everybody's talking about is no, that he's not leaving. What does that mean? Um, always remember... If any of your argument about why he's going to leave boiled down to him or the Senate or the Supreme Court doing the right thing, just take that out of your argument altogether because those things cannot be counted on. And that's unfortunate, and especially he's going to have this 6-3 Supreme Court. We have to make it so huge that it even gets past Kavanaugh. Um, the kind of fraud that they're already engaging in. For one thing, we know that Russia is, is meddling again. Um, we know that they are colluding with them again. There's proof of that. Uh, Giuliani is talking to uh, their intelligence services. We already had the FBI come out and say they're doing it again. So we already know that's going on. And, you know, they're going to try everything everywhere they can. You know, the main, the states that are sort of up for grabs, you know, in case you don't know which are the swing states, it looks, it's looking like those northern Rust Belt states, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, are, are going, looks like they're going blue. It looks like Arizona is leaning blue. Mark Kelly is winning that, uh, Senate seat by a lot, so that's a good indicator that Arizona is very likely to go blue, plus it's, you know, the polls are, are good. Um, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida, there's the possibilities of Georgia and Texas, and we'll talk more about Texas later for sure, but we're it's tied in Texas. So... I know we got our hearts hearts broken with Beto before, but this is this is a different thing. This Trump's on the ballot this time, and uh, that can that can that's going to drive up turnout for sure, obviously. And uh, right now, Biden is tied or ahead in a lot of the polls. But Texas is in play. Georgia is in play. North Carolina is definitely in play. It's a dead heat right now. And uh, all said and done, it can be razor thin. It really could be. It really could come down to at-large electors in two states, in Nebraska and Maine, which are the only two states that have at-large electors, which means that it's not a winner-take-all state. The popular vote automatically gets the uh, electoral votes. Maine and Nebraska aren't like that. They have three different at-large uh, sections of voting. So it really could come down to one or two people in Maine and Nebraska. That's how close this could be. So it matters. It matters, it matters, it matters how much you care, 
how much you get involved, how much you talk to your your people. If you know people in Maine and Nebraska, if you know people in Arizona, in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, in Florida, in North Carolina, in Georgia, in Texas. Iowa's kind of up for grabs, which is strange. Even Alabama and Mississippi are looking closer than they should be. It's crazy. It looks nice, but it ain't for sure. Of course, uh, obviously, we definitely have to plan that we are not going to know on election night. It's gonna, it's, we have to look at it as election week, election month. But we have to remember to plan on him not leaving the White physically not leaving the White House until he is maybe literally dragged kicking and screaming from the Oval Office or from the residency. Because he's, you know, dumb enough to think <laughs> finders keepers. So he thinks as long as he stays there, he's the president. So we have to be pre prepared for that. And so what's that going to look like? Who's in charge of Is it going to be if like if this is dragging on and dragging on through the courts? That's the scariest part. And that's how it happens. That's how authoritarianism happens. That's how tyranny happens. That's how dictatorships happen. That's what a political coup looks like. It's called a creep. It just kind of happens, and suddenly, all of a sudden, Trump's been president again for six months, and now we're all just used to it, and so I forget, who cares? And we just kind of stop fighting, and then he stays in power forever until he hands it over to his son. Which is why I've said before, if Trump gets four more years, he gets ten more years, at least. So the last thing is, what are we willing to do? While all this is going on, what are we going to do? What if we know by all media accounts, not just the ones we like, but all media accounts say all media accounts, all media, all reporting, all exit polls, everything says that Biden won. But they're still trying to take it through the courts and trying to drag it out for forever. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? Have you asked yourself that question yet? I have. I'll be out there. If you have a chance, look up Day of Rage during the Arab Spring in Egypt when the Egyptian President Mubarak refused to leave. Go take a look at some of those pictures. That's what we're going to have to do. And it's scary. But Lafayette Park is going to have to look like Woodstock. There's going to have to be, it's going to have to be a, a three million person march, not a million person march. I'll be in the streets in Austin. I don't know if I can go to D.C. or not, but I'll be out here raising hell, that's for sure. What about you? Is this the time? You've never protested before. You've never, you're not the type. You're not a, you're not a rabble rouser. You're not a, a protester or a marcher. You're just not that kind of person. What about now? What about now? When we're about to enter into a phase of America that has never existed before, uh, an autocracy, a dictatorship. And if you think it can't happen here, you're wrong. So that is one, one thing that we do have, and that will matter. That voice, if we're loud enough, legislators will hear it. Supreme Court will hear it. And if we're not very loud about it, they won't. ACA will be gone. Of course, women's rights, the right, I mean, that's, that's a goner for sure. There will be no more. I mean, abortion will be illegal. Uh, women's health in general will suffer. Um, civil rights, they'll get rid of the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act. Um, our, our police will be even more militarized. Again, you ain't seen nothing yet. You want tanks in the streets? There'll be police tanks in the streets. Our police will be so militarized. 
again, what we have now, it will look like child's play. When it all comes down, here's my little ray of hope, is Trump is a coward. And while that's caused us a lot of pain the last four years, it can certainly work in our favor when it comes down to brass tacks with this thing. He's a coward. He's a bully. And when you stand up to cowards and bullies, they back down. I think Trump can convince himself that he can find money and power and adoration somewhere else besides the U.S. presidency. I don't think he's ever been in a real fight in his life. So if he gets punched in the nose, he's not going to know what to do. So it's up to us to punch him in the fucking nose. That's our job. Metaphorically, of course. But we do that by burying him in votes. Take away his arguments. Take away any power and possibility that he has to do what he wants to do by making this victory so big it cannot be denied by any remotely rational person, even Brett Kavanaugh. <laughs> but that's what we have to do. The Lincoln Project has been interesting and kind of great. I kind of still hate them, but I love what they're doing right now. One thing that they said a couple of nights ago that I love a lot, and if we could get this tattooed us tattooed on ourselves, we can make a bumper stickers and t-shirts. We will vote, you will lose, you will leave. That's our mantra for the next month and a half, two months, three months. We will vote, you will lose, you will leave. And don't stray from it. Don't ever think this is okay. Don't ever think that this is how politics is supposed to work. Don't ever think that this doesn't matter. Don't ever think that your vote is small. Your vote's not just about you. It's about the country. It's about your community. It's about your family. It's about your city, your county, your state, your country, even the world. That's how powerful your vote is. So don't take it lightly. But again, we're in the home stretch. So we got to do the thing. We got to do it all right. We can't lose focus. We can't get sad. We can't get demoralized. We have to realize that this can be done. It probably will be done, but it's up to us. That's it. It all comes down to what we do. So, will Trump leave? Probably. But it's up to us. So I guess that's all I have for now. Thanks so much for joining me on this broadcast of Onward Radio. Don't forget to donate if you can. Do all the liking and the subscribing and the smashing of the things. You guys, uh, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Not necessarily in that order. I'm Roger Wallace, and we'll see you next time on Onward Radio.